Hey guys, welcome to the Nick Bai YouTube page. You know what you need to do. You need to subscribe, you need to ring the bell, you need to like the page, you need to leave a comment. I appreciate you. All right, here we go. Nick Bob Bo Rude, Game Recap. It's been a while since we've talked. People are like, where's the pod? Where's the pod? Before we get into the game, I mean, a lot's changed in both of our lives since yes. we since that Illinois game. You have had a baby, and I opened a business. I would argue you birthed the business. We both, I mean, <laughs> yes, birthed I birthed the business. You birthed the baby. <laughs> this is so. There's so we both we've had a little. Uh, we've we've been busy. We we've been busy. It's been a big couple weeks. Yeah. It has been. It has been. You look good. You, f I mean, feeling okay? Got a little sleep last night. Yeah. Um. You know, I I brought my daughter here. She's so upstairs. She's upstairs with your kids. So I mean, we're we're just doing the. We're doing the, we're the making real it work. thing. Yeah. We're we're making it work. That's the bottom line. Okay. Uh but no, so that's for people who are like, where you guys been? I opened a business, you had a baby. Legitimate things that but we did we did tape the the back to back pod yeah. that one night. Yeah. So we, we we spaced yeah, the we're, things no, out. We're good. We're good. It's we just like still people be, we like to be present. Though, we had we had a good rhythm going and we got to get back into the flow of things. But yeah. but this is what's good. When you come over, you bring your daughter, they go. I mean, it's it's crunk juice up there. Yeah. It's like the brass rail at, on a game day <laughs> after no, the Huskers win up there. I had to check the score again. It was 17 to 9 yep. was the score. Nebraska wins. Real quick, the game recap bot is brought to you by Onyx Automotive, best of Omaha, number one luxury car dealer. Great location, 150th and Dodge. They, you, you mean, you want to be in, 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 living in a, a luxurious life? They got brands like BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover. Check them out online onyxautomotive.com onyxautomotive.com drive onyx the new standard and uh speaking of uh of of you know businesses shoot 360 we're about eight days in we're gonna go over 100 members today i was actually like working there earlier today we're taping this on sunday it just like to see the reaction on these kids faces bo when they get through a workout you came to the open house you got to yeah. see it these kids like I've had, there's been a couple of kids that like start their workout. They're doing the ball handling, passing. They will stop dribbling. They'll turn to me. They're like a ten year old. Like this is so fun. Yeah, it is. It like, is. It's amazing. It's 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 like they get to play a video game yes. and their favorite sport all yes. at once. And it's sort of like it's like over stimulating. Yeah. Like, oh, what? I, I just and the other thing is like there's a lot of look a lot of kids out there that still love basketball. Yeah. Like that's been like great for me. But I'm telling you, parents, like. Spots are filling up, and I'm telling you, your kid is going to have a great yeah. time. He's going to be encouraged. He is going to improve. He is going to have fun. We're building some, so something special at Shoot360 Lincoln. So go to Shoot360.com uh, backslash Lincoln. Fill out that uh, official recruiting visit form and sign up. All right, Bo Robert Rude. Are we ready to are we ready to talk about this? I think we better. <laughs> 17 to 9. I don't even know where to begin. So the defense saves saves the day again. Yeah. Um something tells me that's what's going to continue to kind of be the theme for the season. It was how it was against Illinois. The offense was already on the struggle bus and the injuries keep on mounting. Um I is it better to talk about the terrible offense or the great defense cuz like I mind. actually I think they're both interesting things to talk about, but what's more interesting? Well, here can I start? Let me start with just a broad thing with the defense. They were great all day. Yeah. Okay. But the game kind of came down to three series and two plays for the yeah. defense. Thanks to Nebraska throwing two interceptions on its first three drives. Northwestern's first three drives started at the Nebraska 44, the Nebraska 47, and then and the Nebraska 13. Yeah. The black shirts stand up and they only give up three points in that first sequence. There was a world where that game could have been 14 nothing. And uh, and it, uh -oh. you, Nick, the, that type of field position, that type of momentum you get from those type of turnovers, that's you're in the kill zone. Then. Yes. That's, that's where as an offensive coordinator, you can just open the playbook and be like, here's my best plays versus this team. And we're going to score. Right. And so they really should have gotten 10 to 14 points minimum. They could have 21 points yes. off of those three possessions. Yes. And they got three. Three points. So to me, I, I look at it, I'm like, yes, they were great for they were great all day, but they were really good when they needed to be early. Uh -huh. And then I wrote it down in the moment, and it proved to be true as the game wore on. Omar Brown's touchdown saving yeah. tackle yep. on the Northwestern running back, 
And then Malcolm Hartsog's touchdown saving tackle on the Northwestern wide receiver saved the game. Well, it's funny when they when they did that, when they both ran those guys down, my thought wasn't like, oh, they're about to score. I was really like, oh, now we're gonna hold them. Yes, kind of just the defense had established himself by that point in the game where you had confidence, like, okay, we just we get had a slip, but they, they're not gonna score easily. And yes. so, like, it was great to see those guys hustle, make that chase those chase down plays. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you gotta do is just like let's let's fight for another day here, even though we lost that little that little battle. Yeah. The war is not over. But you're right. I felt the same way. I'm like when when they got when Omar Brown r- ran down that running back who was not very fast, but still got him. And then same thing with Hartzog. I was like, oh, they're not scoring. Yeah, they're, they're not scoring. But to me, it's three series from the black shirts, the first three, and then those two plays where they got beat, but they still ran those dudes down and got them down. Yeah. Uh, the, it's so. <laughs> It, it, with the, well, I guess we'll just stick with the defense for a little bit before we get to the offense because the offense is just like, I mean, we got a lot to talk about with with what's going on with the offense. But I mean, eight sacks, thirteen tackles for long, TFLs, eight different guys had a sack, eight different. So it's not like it's one dude. It's not like it's just Aiden Hutchinson or it's just Jared Crick or it's just Trev Alberts. Yeah. Like it is. A, a variety of dudes, including including a guy that came from a JUCO that hasn't played all year. Who was that guy? I, I don't. James Williams. I didn't know who he was. I never I seen either. him before. I was like, I had to rewind it, and I tried to. I was like, who is that guy? Is he a scholarship guy? I think he's a scholarship guy, but he he came from a JUCO. Rule said after the game that he had been like killing it and scout team, and so they wanted it. They wanted to create a package for him. Biggest plays of the game. Here comes this. Who the heck is this guy? I, I literally, I saw the guy. I was like, I go, I know for a fact that I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about him. I know one thing about him. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I, I was like, wow, I know I've been in shoot 360 mode, but damn, I seriously don't know. When's the last time someone made a crunch time sack and you went, I don't know who that is? It's just, I, I'm still a little bit blown away by this fact. That they are playing a lot of people yeah. and a lot of young, un- inexperienced people that are doing pretty good. It's very unusual to me. I don't really know what to say about it other than it's very unusual. They're playing true freshmen. They're playing, you know, like I said, 10 guys on the defensive line without really seemingly any sort of issue with, with uh, you know, where they're lining up yeah. and... I'm just a little, it's like, uh, it's a little unfamiliar to me. Yes. Well, I mean, you said it early on. Well, are are they going to be able to continue to rotate these guys like they're doing and sustain the level of play? Yeah. And so far, sans the Michigan game, which you kind of just, I don't know. I don't want to dismiss that game because there were elements of that game. I mean, but they're able to, I guess I've never watched a team, especially a Nebraska team, where a big play can be made and it's like 50 50 that I'm going to be like, who, who is that? Or, or I have, I have to really like, okay, who made that play? Yeah. I mean, it, that Linhart played great. Prince. Well, both two freshmen. Awesome. Butler's starting to really turn it on. He is a red shirt sophomore. I, think I that believe that sounds right. Um, Hunt, Hunt Masher's a red shirt sophomore. And he is balling. He had two He's and a half sacks well. and two, two, two and a half TFLs. We, we, I mean, this is for another day, but you know, we have who's in the club and Nash was not in the club. We're going to have a hard talk about who's going into the club. Come on, come on. If we, tomorrow when that velvet rope, I'm unlocking it for, for the polar bear. Because wasn't Ty Robinson in the club? I think Ty was in the club. He had a, a batted down pass. And he had an, actually, he had his best play of the year uh, in this game, but Nash, it might be Nash over Ty, who's I think actually it is. going in the club. I think it is. Uh, yeah, you're. I mean, it's. You know what's amazing? James Williams, the guy for a guy that had, get his first ever plays. You see, he did like the rock the baby. Probably for, why he was at JUCO. <laughs> <laughs> that is such, us getting a sack and rocking the baby is is. Like you played five plays, man. <laughs> Easy, rock the baby. I just love, I just love. Like his reaction was like, "This is what I do." Uh, see, I, I'm, I, I'm one of those guys who like you hate that stuff. I like, I, I like Malachi Coleman, who's uh, he caught his first touchdown. He's like, "I can't believe I just caught." I want you to be Malachi. Malachi was. I still think Malachi woke up and it's not hit him yet. No, he's like, 
did I do that? What? Like, <laughs> I mean, he caught it. He had no idea what was going on. But, oh. But, James Williams just hit him with. He was on scout team three days ago, and, and he's now like, he's like, "Yeah, he's rocking I rocked the baby. the baby on these mother truckers." You know, I was like, oh, "Okay, man. I love it." But you're right. Like, uh, I mean, I wrote down. I mean, Polar Bear, Prince Will, Gifford, Reimer, Butler, Bullock, James, Doctor James Williams, the baby, the baby doctor, <laughs> the, the Doogie pedi- Hauser, the pediatrician, <laughs> <laughs> Ty Robinson. They all had a sack. Eleven different guys had a TFL. Prince Will, Gifford, Polar Bear, Reimer, Butler, Javen Wright, Len Hart, Bullock. Elijah Judy, Dr. James Williams, the Dr. baby James doctor. He, he's a baby doctor is what he is. And then Ty, Rob, Ty Robinson. Are we calling him the baby doctor? If he's going to be good, his name will be the baby doctor if he keeps rocking it. <laughs> the pediatrician. Because <laughs> he rocks the baby. The pediatrician. I uh, loved it. But uh, no, so it's just one of the themes is like, it's so many different guys. And a lot of them are young. A lot of them are inexperienced. I don't know. I, Tony White, whatever he's doing, good Lord. Especially with those more of those edge guys. I do think there's probably, once you get past Polar Bear and Ty, the interior guys, drop. it seems like the drop-off yeah. is bigger. The edge guys, there's, like you say, there's they're playing, you know, six guys out there that are all kind of like whoever. It It's just, it's. I mean, you played and played at a high level. Could you imagine just being like having that many guys that you could just throw out there and they're all kind of, there isn't a huge drop off. I, I remember there's like, you know, we'd have subs that would come in, but like, I remember basically thinking like when I was out there, like for instance, like Carriker and Jay almost never left. The no, field, right? right. Like yeah. Titus and Lakeven almost never left the interior. And yeah. that's where you rotate more as the, like, but like the ends didn't come out almost ever. It felt like. It's it's unbelievable. The other, real quick, also, uh, rule talked about it in the post game. You know, it was a huge play. Northwestern's first series of the third quarter. I think they had the perfect play call on a screen set up. Isaac and Isaac Gifford makes a. I, I mean, Nick, I wanted to dedicate a uh, a segment of the pod <laughs> today to Isaac Gifford for his just for his play this season, and he's getting better yes. i don't know if you've noticed but like he's been playing really well mm-hmm. but i actually think he's like doing this he's like getting better every yeah. game too like he's playing good and getting better uh and he's he's tackling so well that it's it's a true standout and i'm not just saying this because he's southeast it, i know it's, i know i know i know yeah that. i know but- i'm just saying this as a nebraska fan this kid is playing great football yes he made three probably big time tackles including the one you're talking yeah. about that if he's not a really good football player they're probably still running yes three different times where he like just beats people and makes hard tackles he's really tackling well. because that really and, and maybe i'm wrong it just felt like when they when the screen happened it felt like it was like the first time in a game of chess like the northwestern oc beat us. beat beat Tony White. It was yep. the perfect call. And Gifford beats two guys and makes the play. He was lined up over the center, like yeah. mugged up on the center. They were run a screen pass. He runs across the face of two, like a puller and a, and a tight end and makes this tackle in the open. I mean, it was just a great play, but that I think he of maybe of all the players on the team, he's the reason why this defense is working so good. Because he's cleaning up everything. Oh. If we make a mistake, he's cleaned up. Because he is that rover spot where he basically is the third safety. Just like you let good football players go find the football. Right. That's what he's doing right now. Yes, he's just like going and getting the football, cleaning up the mess. And there's a lot of mess created by that. Yeah. Like that position, Nick. I think it's crucial. And right now, he's playing really good football. If we, I mean, maybe we got to do this on Wednesday. Would he be in the club? He, Nick, he is like he's first in line at the club. I mean, right at now. this point, I like, might say the he might be playing the best football on the team right now. Right, Polar Bear and Gifford to me are in the club at this point. On defense, those two are in the club. Obviously, Reimer would be in the club if he hadn't had the Mercer. Mercer, yeah. Geez. But I think you you could say right now the best football being played in our team is is, is Isaac, Isaac Gifford. Gifford. Yeah, he's balling, man. Uh, you see, Luke was at the game. 
Yeah, good, Luke, yeah, shout out game. to Lou Gifford, big fan. Uh, real quick, they did seem like for a little bit they were doing some polling stuff that looked like it was given defensively. Yeah, uh, so Northwestern offensively oh. looked like they were. Did you notice? You're you're smarter than me with that. Did you notice anything with some of their creased runs? It just looked like there was like a moment where it was like, ooh, are they kind of figuring something out? No, or so, it was so that long run. Uh, I re- I just around a couple times and watched. Kind of, we basically had. Like, you know, usually when you have, uh, you know, a blocker, you need a guy on both sides of a blocker. Yep. They basically, they had two different blockers and we had four guys and our four guys went on like both went on the wrong side of block. Got it. Okay. So, so we wasn't... had two guys okay. there in the, in the middle and we had two of those guys somehow like our fits just got totally discombobulated where like our two safeties fit wrong. Right. So it was, that makes sense. It okay, was actually, I, more of a fluke that play than than not. They just didn't fit it up. Two two different pairs of guys in the same play didn't fit up. Do you feel like the defense can keep this up? I think the defense can keep this up against the bad teams in the Big Ten West. I just don't know what you're going to get against the better teams. Yeah, but but you know what the reality is? Who who who's that? Who is that going to be? Wisconsin is maybe the. The best team we're going to be facing. Maryland offensively can pose some Maryland. some issues. Okay, um, Maryland and Wisconsin. Let's put those. We'll two put. We'll put so, We'll see what we're made of against them. But like, you tell me, we got Purdue, Iowa, Iowa and like Michigan I, State. I, like, I think we can do that against them. I do yeah, think so. I, I'm I'm very encouraged by the defense's last two weeks. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's not easy when you're at one point. Someone made the point. On, I think about Mitch Sherman that they had turned after turning it over on two of their first three possessions. Nebraska had turned it over on five of their last seven possessions, dating back to the Illinois game. So I mean, this offense is just continuing to put them in brutal spots, and they keep on standing up, man. I, if you if you need a reason, I, I know there's a lot of people that were just they're not they weren't as excited about this win as they probably would have liked to be, and where our program's at right now, all that. But if you need something to be excited about, like you should just focus on this defense and focus that we really have the start of something that could be pretty good. Like yeah. these are a lot of young guys. Yeah. These are, you know, he's getting a lot of new dudes, year, in, right? First right. year coordinator. Like I, I got to think that these guys are going to get better at this system even. And, you know, you got, you know, guys like Gifford and Hartzog, you know, Brown yep. and th- these guys are all coming back. Like, you know, we got some guys, Prince, well, liner, you know, like we're going to lose a couple, like we're going to lose Reimer, but like, God, if they can get some D tackles to go with hunt masher and, right. and you know, some of these young kids coming up, God, these guys could be pretty good. We just need a few. I think we need a few more pieces, like one more elite defensive lineman, like a defensive tackle that is just a monster, uh, that can pass rush. And, you know, and from there, it's like, and maybe one more guy in the secondary to replace Newsom. Like, I think this, you know, they could have a nice little run here. I know Tony White's got a pretty good contract, but I do feel like Jerry Maguire needs to, is his agent. Like, I'm a little, as I was, this is the first game where I was like. You think we're losing him type of thing? The first time I was like, man, they got to make sure they hold on to this guy. You know, I, I, I think that sometimes, but then I go like. It was like, you know, almost like the T fish thing. Like T fish had like one year and then like yeah. everybody wanted to get T fish. And then like a few years later, it's like, it's not the same thing. Right. right. He's like, got to sustain it. I just was looking at it. Maybe it. I'm not saying right now. I just look at him as like, man, if he keeps this up, hey, Nick, if we got to pay him a little bit extra to make ourselves sleep better at night, then do it. Like I, I, he's proving to me that he's a good coordinator and be worth paying him a little bit more. Right. But like, I also don't know that like, this is like, we're like everybody in the country, like Alabama's calling tomorrow. Like, I, I also yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know about that. I just yet. wonder if like, a you know, Miami of Ohio, like a, you know, some school like that. Oh, you're would saying have, head coach. I'm saying head coach. Oh, so I'm, that, I'm that's wondering actually where I think. No, the, that that's where chance, I chance. If he has head coaching aspirations, if he's doing well enough, but see, here's, here's where I would argue. We have to win a lot more games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah. if we go, 
if we win four or five games, I don't think you get head coaching jobs as the coordinator on a team that lo- that just lost. Agreed. Seven if they games. if they finish this season strong, and I'm getting way ahead of myself here. I just yesterday was that first time I was like, wow, this guy. I've just have never seen. I've never seen anything like this in terms of there. There's no real just like bona fide first round superstar. Yeah. It's a it's a by committee type defense almost. It it's is. just bizarre. It is. It is. It's totally bizarre. Anything else with the defense before we go over to the offense? Uh, the defense. Anything else in the defense? We've sung them high praises. That's our job to do it. And I think that's that's about it. There we it. go. Okay. The offense. Maybe okay. I'll throw in this caveat. Northwestern's offense sucked. <laughs> they well, were yeah. Terrible. I mean, but they I know because really that's bad. what's, I guess this is what's so hard about this is like. They were bad. I get, but it's like they beat Minnesota. And Minnesota just, and I know you get yourself in trouble of like they played them tough or beat them, so therefore like, but and Minnesota had Iowa, oh they did beat they Iowa. did beat Iowa. I guess but Iowa yeah okay you yeah. know and then so. uh you know Nebraska looked way better than Illinois but then Illinois beat Maryland right yeah. and the, you know, like so you just do you, you're like basically had Wisconsin Wisconsin beat. beat so you go well so I think in my mind I need to like I need to like. I have this standard of what like a good team is supposed to look like both for Nebraska and its opposition. Yeah. And I need to, I need to adjust that a little bit you of mean, just like, you have to just be as good as what's in front of you. You mean you just need to be, so explain that. To me so what, I, what I'm saying is yes, in Northwestern's not very good, but neither is Iowa or Minnesota yeah. or Michigan state. So we can use that. You, we can use that to kind of go. Well, this, that. Well, they're, that's they're not, all it is. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, that's and the right. same. Yeah. And the same. And so the same thing could be said if you look at a critical lens with Nebraska. Be like, well, man, if you think this is good, well, they just beat Illinois Northwestern yeah. and should have beat Minnesota. Yeah. And if you do the comparative scoring of how those other teams have played the rest of the schedule. It's looking up for us. <laughs> looking, I guess, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You, I mean, maybe I'm not explaining that right. I'm just trying to like. I have to. It's all relative. It's all relative. Yeah. How good? It's you just. We it, just need to be better than these not so good teams in our division, right. which it seems like we're kind of doing. Kind of. But again, I think we said this after the Illinois game. I still believe this to be true. Nebraska could win at all the games on their schedule. They could lose all the games on their schedule right now. Yeah. And the reason why we might lose is this reason. Because, why because of this <laughs> offense here. Because So what? Are, where do you even begin? I mean. Just, I'll start with this. Just really disappointing in to uh, coming off a bye to start the way they started. First play of the game, it, you know, you're going against a Northwestern team that had struggled against the run. You're going into the wind. You got a quarterback that is a far cry from, you know, Tom Brady, and you come out airing it out. And what's hard is it, it was. He was open, you know, Fedoni, and I think even Borkature was open too. They were both. They were I both. Borkature was way open, wide open. So what's tough is I sit there and go like, well, they were open, but there's also part of it's like, don't you want to come out and like establish something? Yeah, where, I guess hard. where you come out I, on that? I, like, I'm I, just if more than anything, I, 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 I don't like to tell to limit people what they can call and, um, but you know, like. I, he has to be the responsible for if his guys can't do what he wants them to do, it's on him. Yep. Right. He's so, about Satterfield. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And like, so you can say guys were open, but your guy can't get him the ball or make the read. Right. So right. then can you keep running it? That, I guess that's, what I don't I, know. I, that's that. That's where your point of maybe you just need to run it to start out feels a little bit more like, okay, maybe we do. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's weird. I, I wrote this down. This offense is limited, but it doesn't necessarily act like it sometimes. They don't want like, to be limited. Adults. Like they, they try a lot of things. They take a lot of shots. Like that 2009 offense. If you think back to it, they knew they were limited and they played super vanilla. Yeah. And while I'm not necessarily calling for, you know, go in the most basic package and not try anything. It's just this weird thing where it's like this clear, this offense clearly has issues. It's getting more, the injury bugs continue to just 
bite the shit out of that side of the ball. So it's just this weird thing for me where I'm like, yes, I get it. Like he was open. I see it. I got it. But you got a defense that is rolling. And maybe you could argue, say like, well, the defense is rolling. So you try to take more shots because you know, the defense has your back. It's just, I don't know. It's like, they don't necessarily play like they know they're limited. I almost just don't know what they are. I still don't know. Like we're running options still and it works sometimes and it looks terrible other times. And then we drop back pass and we do pro like kind of our, like the, the, the uh, Jack of all trades, the master, the master of, none. of none, but like, I just like, it's hard because Sims he has a good arm struggled tremendously. Harburg has a really good arm and struggles with some of the, like the feel stuff and the read stuff. Right. And so like, I still don't know exactly what he is as a throwing quarterback. Cause sometimes it looks good. Yeah. But sometimes it looks real bad. It looks really bad. And that last game looked really bad. A and, lot of them. And, and so I that's where I'm like, okay, Maybe they're still learning who he is too, but we need to, I think, form the identity a little bit more clearly. And to me, that identity just, to me, there are times it should just dial back the risks, I'm okay especially early in a game. But uh, this was, Harburg didn't play great. Let's be honest. Har Harburg has now had, from the second half to Illinois to this pretty much this whole game, he didn't play very well. Uh, he was sloppy through two picks. He dropped a shotgun snap. He had another botched exchange with yeah. him and Emmett Johnson. He finished 8 of 17, 85 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He did have 16 carries for 72 yards and a touchdown. This was the first game. I'm not saying I went all the, the way there mentally, but this was the first game where there was a moment where I was like, Sam, could we see Sims? I think every Husker fan had, it was a flicker. It wasn't lingering moment. Yes. They all had a flicker where they are not sure. Right. Right. And I, but, but at the same time, Harburg has earned the right to be the guy still. He's the guy. I agree. He's the guy, but he's not so far the guy that we are like, we're good for the next two years, folks. Like we are still like, can Heine? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, get your hands up behind you. Can he do the quarterbacking job that needs to be done to win the Big Ten West? Which means, like, every week you got to give us a chance to win and you can't give the ball away. I mean, we won despite some bad turnovers. Oh, some bad turnovers that led to great field position for Northwestern, you know, against, I don't know, I was about to say against good teams, but it's like, I don't know who that is. That's where I keep doing that thing where it's like, well, I mean, is that are they really going to get tested like that? But I, I, I just don't think you can win. I mean, Northwestern you're not going to win. Of, they're yeah. bottom of the barrel for talent. Yep. Right. Yep. Yes. And and just in general, oh, you keep playing with fire like this. You keep yeah. turning it over. Yeah. You keep like you, you're Purdue. The, these teams are going to get you eventually. Because you know let's be honest, that this that there was a version of that Northwestern game. There was a version of that Northwestern game where it's twenty four to. Seven in the Illinois game, Nick. We made a goal line stand, fourth and one goal line stand on the opening drive yes. that like changed everything that game. I think they score there. It's a long night for us. I agree. So, so yes, Nebraska keeps on winning. That's great. But I'm just this 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 offense has got to find a way to to tighten it up. And I just Harburg didn't did not play very well. No, that was the first like. I think he's had some throws that we kind of go, that should have been picked. Yes. And these are the ones were like, no, they, they were this right. time. And they basically, you know, he didn't throw it a ton after he, he pulled it and scrambled a lot, which he did a good job. I'm going to give him credit for doing those things. He got a couple of nice, tough first downs where he ran for yeah. them. Um, and then, you know, Nick, he delivered on one pass that he needed to deliver on. He threw that ball. Good. Yeah. And we talked about Coleman scoring, but like if he can do that, and then just not have turnovers. He, he he needs to just go eight for 15 with one good throw right. and not turn it over. That's a better recipe for success than turning them loose and seeing what yeah. happens. I think. I, boy, he really, and we knew they were roommates and besties. Like, dude loves him some Canton, Ohio, Fedoni. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've done for the game, for everything <laughs> yeah. you're going to do for the game. I mean, dude loves him like his you know when you fill out something you're like emergency contact he's like thomas fedoni 
Who are you leaving all of your yeah. estate to? Well, that's an easy one for me. It's all going to one person. He's met his power of attorney. He's. I know my family will protest this, but it's all going to one person. You can guess who it is. The entire estate of Heinrich Harburg <laughs> will be left to Thomas Fedoni. <laughs> There's no question that emergency contact information for Heinrich yes. Harburg is Thomas Fedoni at this you point. You know where the ball's going. No, I, can't. I actually going like to. it. Nick, I actually like it. I love that. Like, uh, throw to who's open. I'm more like, like get it I'm to you, throwing dude. to my guy. Yeah, that's how, well, that's how Tommy Armstrong was with Westy. Like, everybody's got their dude. He, Fedoni is his guy. I like dudes. I like when you got your dude, and I like it when you throw. So I actually like these thrown to him, but I wonder if that's becoming obvious, but. It is a little bit, but I so don't Donnie know. just it, didn't seem very open much yesterday. No. Well, so. and that's, and that's, uh, where do you, I'm going to ask you this question. Where do you draw the line on, uh, like assessing Marcus Satterfield, criticizing Marcus Satterfield, assessing Heinrich Harburg, criticizing Heinrich Harburg when you take into consideration the injuries? Answer that question after I tell you about Onyx Automotive. Because let me tell you, you need to step up your luxurious car game. They're the number one luxury car dealer in Omaha. Number one. Great location. 150th and Dodge. You check them out. You can go online. I'm looking online right now. OnyxAutomotive.com. And they got all the information you can need. New, pre-owned, all the different leading brands, BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover. I told you, you bought a white Range Rover and you are might as well be Dr. James Williams just rocking a baby. That's what that's what when he shows up to the game, he's in a, he's in a Dr. Rover. James Williams, the pediatrician. <laughs> the pediatrician is rocking the baby. So and listen, they they really try to make that whole experience luxurious where if you purchase a, a, a vehicle you get a bottle of wine we've had that wine it's delicious so you need to check them out 150 the dodge or online onyxautomotive.com onyxautomotive.com drive onyx a new standard and this pod is brought to you by pella omaha tomorrow do you understand it's going down tomorrow Borood. pella is going to be here they're installing a new bay window a new front door we have a new window in our bedroom going in and my wife couldn't be more excited we are fired up and everything about this process has been made simple because of pella the showroom actually feeling what we're installing and and then debbie has made the whole process easy coming to our house she's been able to help us out with colors different things different formats it has been fantastic and it's all going down tomorrow if you need some new windows or a new door you need to check out pella you can go to their showrooms in lincoln and omaha or check them out online PellaOmaha.com. that's PellaOmaha.com. all right bo robert rude time for you to answer that question how do you how are you how are you doing that because like it, we sit here and we go man i don't know marcus satterfield this marcus satterfield that and it's like it's getting absurd the amount of injuries you lose billy kemp i'm not sure if it's for the season or not ethan roddy rowdy piper i think may be done for the year ben great scott got hurt but came back in great scott, great scott. he came back in <laughs> into the game uh hey just go through those nicknames one more time <laughs> <laughs> what did you say for billy kemp I don't think I had where Billy Sean Billy, Kemp would be the only one to have Billy, Billy Kemp, Kemp, who Tommy Pickles. Tommy Pickles. There we go. There we go. Tommy Pickles. <laughs> Tommy Pickles goes down. Ethan, Ethan Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Piper. And then uh, Ben Great Scott. Ben Great Scott. Ben Great Scott went down. And, and then when you take into consideration, you know, I mean, obviously, Gabe Irvin, Ramir Johnson, Isaiah, Isaiah Garcia, Castaneda, Xavier Betts, all these guys that were supposed to be in the equation. Our top four receivers are out. Is yes. that right? If, if I'm thinking about that right, Betts gone. Isaac, Castaneda, yeah. and then Marcus Billy Kemp. Washington, Billy Kemp. That's our top four receivers are out. That's pretty remarkable. And top two running backs. Go. Top two running backs out. Like, you know, I mean, it, it's, I don't know. I mean, I think you have to take it into consideration. You you definitely do. Absolutely, you do. Um, That's not to say you give a complete pass, though. And you got Sims and you got Harburg as your quarterbacks who are, um, you know, I guess you got to coach what you have. I mean, and they had, you know, the off season to get whoever they could, but you know, I'll give him a little leeway, I think, because it's his first year. Um, but at the same time, like 
you got to get the most out of your guys. And I, that's what I don't know is like, if you were to say, pull the guys in internally, like, are you better under him or worse since he's gotten here? Right. Satterfield offensively, like, uh, do you feel like Great question. he's making you better or not? As a, I think a coordinator can do that. Yeah. And, and, I, and I don't I know. I don't know. I don't know how we, what that would come out as. And I think right. that is where I don't, I'm not definitive on it. I don't know. He's just not doing the job or he's going to do the job. Give him time. I don't know. I would say that that poll, I'd love to hear what the players would say. Yeah. Cause like they're real, like no one will know who it is. Yeah. It's not even made public. It's only for me and Nick's knowledge. Yeah. That's the poll. I yeah. Want. You're right. Cause I'm not sure you just go down the, down the list of like who's back and if they're better, I don't know, but it, it is. I mean, there's these injuries though are getting, are getting ridiculous at, at this point, but I just, I just get the sloppiness of it at times is still like dropped shotgun snap again, botched exchange between Harburg and I don't think it was once a game. It's, it's something once a game, it kills a drive. Yes. You know, and then whether it's, whether it's now they didn't have as many, uh, offensive line bonehead penalties this game, but once or twice a game, they're going to just throw a series away because of just, self-inflicted stupid stuff yeah and, and our running backs have not played as well i mean well, anthony grant has not I mean, he's hasn't had one he hasn't had a game like any a, of his early games yeah, a year ago where yeah. you're like ooh, yeah and what i don't because yeah what i was uh now they ended up Emmett johnson ended up looking okay and fleeks ended up looking okay but i was I'm not gonna lie. I was shocked when I saw that Emmett Johnson was going to start the the Northwestern. I, I'm game. trying to understand it. What? Why? He fumbled at the end of the game for some. That the, at the end of the Northwestern game, I think that was the sense I got from Rule that they're they're really trying to punish that. I guess I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not, he's your best weapon on offense. I just I just don't know how you can punish your best weapon when you know uh, there's other people making mistakes like and they stay in the game like. That's your best weapon. That's where, that's where, Tough. like, you know, I don't know. It sounds nice in theory when you're a coach to say, like, I'm going to treat everybody the same. No. But when you really get to it, eh, I mean, do you really want to be in the business of sending messages when you're already as depleted as you can imagine? And you're going to take now, especially without Kemp, like, Grant is just about the only one that feels like can, could make a big play. Yeah, make a play and, so I don't I, I, nothing against Johnson. He's just a young guy. He's like physically, you can tell he's like he's not there. He's right, too, he, he's he, not there. He ran okay, and Fleeks ran okay, but those guys aren't. I, I promise you this. I don't think Purdue's like shaking in their boots. Get ready, to, praying that they say, "Yeah, keep Grant in the bench." You know, that's that's what right, you want, right? And so I go, I, you know, and that's that's to me right. I get it, like, but like, you're hurting yourself too by not having Grant out there. Yes, I. I just was surprised by that, but you're right. The running backs have yet to really. It, it's weird because the rushing numbers have been good, generally speaking, for this team. But it's a lot of it's the quarterback. It's a lot of QB run game, and and it's a lot of. I don't know. I just have yet to have a game where I really felt like, or even a stretch of runs that I really felt like were really really good runs. It just it's I mean it's it's it, we've had enough sample size now. We're like. If you someone's got to make a play. seven games, yeah. you know, like we're seven games in. Yes. Like we're, we've crossed the halfway point. Like we haven't had a good run. <laughs> you know? and you're right. Like what's the best run? It might Anthony have been grants called back touchdown. That yeah. was the best run. Yes. You're right. That's it. it there you go. Back. Yeah. That was the, his best moment. And it was called back. So, I mean, that like I was thinking that well, he did have at least one game where he got some yards, but a lot of it was called back too. Yeah. But really, yeah, I just, I don't know. We're, this offense doesn't seem to want to play a complete game, one, and then two, you know, like, be somewhat clean, be somewhat dangerous at times. Like, oof, I don't know. I, 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 it's hard to assess this. All. I just didn't even know. It's the first thing I've ever done. Is I don't even know where to begin with assessing this offense because, boy, man, has it been painful to watch but that's the problem i think the problem with it more than it being like ugh, we're just doing a score we don't score a lot of points like iowa was probably for them maybe that was a little bit painful last year yeah 
Uh, but some of these offenses are boring. They're a little bit vanilla. Um, and I don't think we would care if it's vanilla and a little bit boring. But when it's like bad, when it's painful, like yes, like we're like, what is this? It's, That's the problem. That that last game was the most. Ooh, what is this? It's we just. Had, like, I mean, again, like I said, just coming out of a bye, and on the first whatever six eight plays of the game you you threw two interceptions and billy kemp fumbled and luckily they got yeah. it back i mean you 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 almost had back. yeah like it's just at some point clean it up seven I, I, games and we have not cleaned it up no and so it, it just it's i guess for me i'm just struggling with what i said earlier in that it's like this offense is limited but it doesn't necessarily act like it. Yeah, it's it, and I don't even know what to say about it. It's not, at times because it's so it's been so bad for so many games, and it, it was so extremely bad for those first couple. Like it was so bad that it was almost hard to watch. Bad, and that's what I think people are still feeling, and that's why like they're almost like not. They're not excited about this win because it's still there. It's almost like well, because yeah, you you're ugh. you're very excited about the win. Yeah, you're very excited about the defense, but the offense is like so so extreme in one direction yeah. of like terrible that it just you 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 leave yourself you leave these games like I don't I don't know quite. Like I'm happy, but it's like if somebody's like, "Hey, you got your, uh, you actually got a bonus this week," and it's like, "But the dollar bills kind of smell." Just so you know, <laughs> so you get the money. You're like, oh, thanks, thanks, I got the money. It smells. I'm like, ooh, this it is pretty I bad. Yeah, I don't know what the, that's. <laughs> we'll go with the, it's what it is. Stinky though. dollar bills or something. You like, got yeah, stinky good. ones. I got the money. We got the money. But it just they kind of smell. They kind of smell like doo doo. So it's I don't know what it is. We just. Yeah, I think we won the game. We won, Nick. We've lost. I know, and that's where you said games. you're never like you I'm were like never I'm never gonna. gonna and yeah, and then it's like, listen, what's amazing about this is that Nebraska. There's a world that I even struggle to say this out loud because I just feel like ultimately their offensive struggles are going to catch up to himself. Uh, catch up to himself. Like, there's a world where they're in Indianapolis playing Michigan for the Big Ten title. I can't even think about that, Nick. I can't. Even but think that, about it's that. it's as crazy as that sounds. It's not that crazy. Because this would be arguably the the worst offense we've seen. This is as bad of an offense as I mean. You you know you had moments in two thousand nine where it was really bad. But what's amazing is when we watch that Husker Classic recap of two thousand nine, it's like they had like Niles Paul and uh, you know like Roy Halu and you know you're like why why is this so bad? Why would it's kind of weird how that was. It, it was that extremely bad. There were moments last year after Casey went down where whew, it was pretty, yeah. it was pretty shaky. Um, but well, I will say this in general, and this is, I'm sounds like I'm not trying to take away. Cause again, like we said, like all you got to do is play what's in front of you. This is the worst. The big 10 has been sans Michigan. Yeah. This is the worst. The big 10 has been since Nebraska's joined the big 10 and it's not even close what's the symptom of that is i that, don't know is that the symptom of we lost a lot because i think we had a lot of like illinois had a lot of guys to go to the league like i feel like we lost a lot of like good players to the nfl maybe hey, i don't know what it is but man these teams this is <sighs> this is a specifically bad year i mean i mean even for and everything's you adjust to what you're like even when i watch ohio state yeah. Like, I'm not like, whoa. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Marvin Harrison Jr., you're like, that's a dude, man. But, like, but, they don't have, like, the, the defense isn't as scary as, as it used no, to be. No, there's not a Chase Young. Yeah. You know, there's not. I mean, Penn State's okay. The, yeah. there, there's no Saquon Barkley out there. Yeah. You know, Wisconsin, okay. You know, there isn't a TJ Watt out there. There isn't a, you know, a Melvin Gordon out there. Yeah. You know, just go on and on and on. It's just we. It's. There's less special players. I would say right. that where, there, where you, there's where always there's, like every, it seems like every team had like a couple usually. And I'm seeing less of those like, Oh, but they got that guy. Right. And you I'm know. not sure who that is for a lot of these, for a lot of these teams, but real quick. Did there, there had to be a lot of people watching that game when 
Harburg threw the option pass where it was either a lot of guys were like, Oh God. Or they were like, had to, re- had to like, they wouldn't go cry <laughs> at, of nostalgia. Could you, did that get, I mean, that got me feeling some things. I mean, Nick, it, it's, there's something about it. It universally works though. Like option and option pass. There's a reason why we had success with it. Not to say like, we have to go do that, but like, it's so hard to defend the option. And it's almost impossible to to not like get have that wrinkle on that, off it yeah. on, on that option pass. Well, that's what you know. It's it's amazing how you know after the game. I'm not sure. Did you listen to the post game press conference? Did no. you listen? So Rule said that Ron Brown had been pushing that like if you're gonna run this option, you have to put in the option pass. And Tom Osborne apparently came in this week and helped draw it, draw up. it up. And Rule said he goes, I usually never do this because when that happened, if there was a camera, he goes, he pointed up to To's skybox. Yeah, it is like so. Think back in the first game, they ran Osborne. I know the trick play to score. They left Coach Osborne come in and draw up the belly option Rule's pass. Not, Nick Rule's not stupid. Well, Nick, I guess Rule he, is Rule is a marketer. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He I'm not saying it's disingenuous. Like, I think it's sincere. No, I think there's he sincere he really goes, reverence. I'll do it. I think there is sincere respect, reverence, and all those things for Tom Osborne. And same thing with Frank Solich. Like, I think he genuinely, like, he's not placating. He's like, yeah, I want, like, if people are like, do you want Coach Osborne to come in and draw up the option pass? He's like, yes. Yeah, and I'll run it. Like, he kind of <laughs> is just like, the people want to see it, right? Let's give it to him. Like, he, he has a little bit of that where, yeah. Like, I think of guys like Nick Saban and are like, that's the antithesis of what they do. It's like, I don't care what anybody thinks. <laughs> right. I'm doing what I know is right. Yeah. I feel like rules like, that seems like a good play and the fans will love it. They're like, <laughs> they're like Saban. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it is. I'm trying to think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Nick, he's giving the people what they he, want. He's, he's giving the people what they want. If, they want if option Saban, pass. If Saban got, if they like came to his option, like, we found Bear Bryant. We dug him out He's of the grave. T- we found he had a secret treasure stash that he buried in his backyard, and he found a letter to the Alabama coach, and he had, please, for my dying wish, draw. I want this play ran on the first. He would be like, I don't care. I don't I'm not think doing so. it. We're not- He's not running his program anymore. It's my like he wouldn't do it. I don't. I don't want to hear about Bear Bryant anymore. You know, I guess listen, if you guys could talk about the past, I'm living in the now. Like that's what it'd be like, okay. I but mean, he, it just is. He meanwhile, just, meanwhile, Matt Rule is letting Tom Osborne come like, oh, he's doing good. point. He's doing shout outs during the game. I mean, it's unbelievable. He, he's a mark. I think he's smart. I think what he's doing is he's endearing himself to Husker Nation. That to me is what he's doing. I just it's weird how much like you would have thought, and I'm not, I'm not trying to take shots. Like, I mean, because I get it. Uh, to a certain extent, I think Tom Osborne was around Frost a lot, but the way this, like all that has worked, it seemed like that would have been how Frost would have been with T.O., but it's been more rule with T.O., and I don't know if that's just rules a little more like... He's a better marketer now. I don't know. I mean, he's a really good marketer. He knows how to, like he knows, he, he has a great intuition for this is what the people want. Right. And this. And is as what long as on do. some level it like kind of lines up with what's best for the team yeah i mean i don't think he's like ah, I, I don't care what happens if i've run a couple options that like me i don't think it's like that no. i think it's like he's really wants to I mean, win it makes sense he has ron brown as a coach and he's like well why wouldn't i ask this guy and and coach osborne who won like i don't know 10 games a year for 40 years <laughs> right like w- w- what'd you guys do yeah i mean it's right he's he's has enough humility to be like that's a great idea and i'm gonna run it yeah. Like, I actually respect it. Like, it doesn't have to be that, like, religious. We're like, I am not allowed to take another coach's note and use yeah. it. Like, use it. I, I'd, I would love to know exactly how it went down. Like, did he call Coach Osborne and say, can you come in and draw up this option pass or what that was? Between I mean, if, if Ron Brown's in there, like, yeah, pushing stuff, I just, like, I, but I, and I bet Coach, in, o, you know, yeah. I bet Coach Osborne loves that. Yeah. You know, he's like, come in, you know, still be a part of it. This used to be Turner. <laughs> Sign cooler, Remington. <laughs> they pull. Friars going down the deep post. It should be wide open. Thank you. <laughs> but we don't want to celebrate. No celebrating. No rocking the baby. Uh, I'm looking at you, doctor. 
I don't know why when you do a Tom Osmond, when we do Tom Osmond impressions, I can't do it. But yours is so like, you're like, hey, a dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, I just loved it. That, that, uh, I mean, that play brought back some memories, man. And it makes sense to run it. Oh, wow. Is that funny to me? But he is. Uh, we love Dr. Tom. Though. Oh, he man. I mean, no, way. there's, I mean, he we is like him. one of my forever sports heroes. Yeah, uh, always will be. Uh, also, Special teams was better. Um, yeah. Tristan Alvano banged one through from 47 into the win. Yeah, boy. He finally, he finally he got, he got 40, I think. Didn't he get 40? Tommy, Tommy, your boy. Tommy brought that thing out. Got about 36 hey, on him. Hey, your boy, Tommy. You see me, and he got an interception on the, you've seen a lot of bad Hail Marys. How about Northwestern's Hail oh, Mary yeah. to the 12 yard line? That's what you give to the quarterback that doesn't have like the real deal. It's like, uh, like. To the 20. Hell Mary, and it is. To the 17-yard line. A little short. He threw a Hail Mary that didn't even get to the end zone. Doesn't work very well. No, it does not. Uh, Bushini, seven punts, four down inside the 20. One against the wind. The one against the wind to turn the field. That was a great a great play. And, you know, Sam brought it up. The, the good complimentary football, Sam being Sam McEwen, that Bushini's punt, at the end of the at the at the beginning of the fourth quarter, maybe the end of the third quarter, that got him inside the like around the twelve. Jamari Butler got a sack. Yep, they pinned him inside the ten. Then they punt. Nebraska fair catches it at the forty four. Shot and and now it's you know it's, what I say about those shots. Yes, when it was time. You, soon as you cross the, that's when the coordinators go like they go. Okay, let's turn the page to turn your textbooks to shot the shot page and. There we go. Like, Tom Osborne. It's like clockwork. Yeah. It's coming. And and so like that sequence, because that was, I mean, that pretty much for all intents and purposes, it was yeah. good night, drive home safely, head to the volleyball game later on. Huge because play. Huge. And, and, you know, like I said, we, we played offensively bad enough to lose, but we had one play that was good enough to, to get us over the and that's where And that's where I am. That's where I'm a little bit talking out of both sides of my mouth because I do think, I mean, Nebraska only had that one sustained drive, that 10 play 77 yard drive that ended in the Harburg uh, little short touchdown run. It's going to be hard for this offense to sustain drive. So they do have to take some shots. There's nothing I just, wrong with taking shots. Yeah, I, I just, just think, like you said, do you want to come out throwing it all over the field or do you want to maybe play conservative and to be you know, start, start the, yeah, start like, the land acquisition game. Yeah. Like start the, I like I, the land. I, I like us being away from our backed up into our own territory. Just cause I think we're just like, I don't trust every, yet. does it not feel like every game is just except for the Illinois game. Cause it was the other way where Nebraska kept getting turnovers, but like, yeah, just seems like all the field position battles always so tilted one way for, but I just, I don't know. I'd rather see like them come out and run Harburg, like on three quarterback powers and punt it. than come out and try to get your, you know, Spider two Y banana to yeah. boa constrictor Canton, Ohio. Yeah. They both were open. Whatever that call was. Even they had the nice wheel route. They had the post wheel. I mean, they got it. They, Bullock was wide open. open. They're open. They just like like say, we huh. I don't want to say tell people how to call. Like he says, he's, he's calling plays where guys are open, but like you got to do it. Can your guy do it? Right now, I don't know where he's at with making those reads. I don't either. But I, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not. I haven't given up on anybody. It's still Heine's team until yeah, it, it goes. If it ever went worse, but you're right. This was the first game. There was like a little. There was just a moment where it just flickered a little bit. I was a like flicker. Jeff Sims. I was like, no, not yet. But not I yet. thought about it for the first time. I was like, man, I see Sims this here. Is baseball. It's like he's not warming up in the bullpen. But you're. But the the manager looked down at the light. I was like, <laughs> you know, I give him a look. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, Sims, just stay in your seat, Sims. Just stay in your seat. We're not going to the bullpen. I, but he looked at him. Nick, he looked at Sims. <laughs> <laughs> he put in a big dip and was like, I don't know why. <laughs> Sims is almost like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to see that curveball yet, Sims. It's the third inning, Sims. Easy, boys. Easy, easy. Okay. 
don't know why that's that funny to me, but it's really <laughs> That's really good. Oh, man. Okay, we probably need to get out of here because I'm going to just lose my mind. Look at us. We wanted to be tight. We're at like 55 minutes, Doc. Anything we're missing, anything from that game, we can't. We, we forget anything? We got we got the doctor. We got, we got kids the, up there. We need to go rock. Yeah, those we babies. should go rock the baby. Let's go rock the baby. A Heard at Sports Network production.